The, today is May the 11th. I'd like to call the uh, monthly meeting of the Urban Forestry Advisory Board to order so we can get started officially. Yeah, okay. Sue, you had a question about something? Oh, I, we can just go down the agenda. Okay. All right. So we call to order. Um, are we going to take roll call officially? Yeah, we could do that. Okay. Glenda? Present. Malcolm. Yes, here. Russell. Here. Damon. Russell. Aubrey. Here. Hank. Sue. Here. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the um, m um, meeting from April 13th. Um, I read the minutes and mm -hmm. found one error, one correction that I emailed to John. It didn't show that Hank was absent. Oh, okay. And I made some grammatical changes in okay. text, and I sent those to John. I've made both corrections from mm -hmm. each okay. one of you and guys. I made approval as John has them. I second that. Uh, all, uh, let's take this to a vote. All approval of the uh, minutes after John has made the corrections. Aye. Aye. Opposed? The minutes have been approved. Okay, next item on the agenda is our native or invasive plant presentation by Hank uh, Thomas, uh, who is not here at the present time, but we'll table that until he arrives. Uh, did he call and say he wouldn't be here? No, he mess I messaged him on Monday to uh -huh. let him know he was up. Mm -hmm. And um, he was aware. Okay. All right. Then the next item on the agenda is the annual report to the city council. No. That's an old one. Oh, I copied the wrong. Oh, here it is. I got it. I'm sorry. I had them both. Okay. Call to order. We did that. Okay. Uh, that's why Hank's name wasn't on there. The annual, <laughs> item number four, annual sustainable landscape awards. Uh, Sue, you had a question about? The little plaque we'd been doing, mm -hmm. the winners. I think we had a little ceramic that hung from a, are we yes. doing something similar this time? Sundial. We're going to do a sundial. Oh. I thought that was really appropriate and I had Ken and we talked about it, so we could have a sundial. Okay, will it be there to keep? Yes, it'll be there okay. permanently to keep, mm -hmm. and it'll say they won 2016 okay. Sustainable Awards. That's nice. Well, that's nice. I think so. Um, and so I said we have three residentials. We actually have six residentials as, as of this, and we have one civic and one restaurant. So I think we're doing that's really eight. well. That's pretty good. I agree. May I ask a question? Um, Hey, the civic ones, uh, yeah, is that like the the apartments and stuff like that? The commercial. Um, do you have any apartments <coughs> or anything that we, have applied? We do. We have not had an apartment apply. Okay. If it's an individual in an apartment, and they've created a garden on their own out of pots or whatever. That's more than welcome. We'd consider that residential. Okay, but an apartment complex would be a commercial. Yes. Okay, and none of them have applied. Correct. The reason I'm asking is I. My apartment complex uh, told me that they were going to apply along with four others so oh. in the same thing. So okay. if, if you hear, just let me know. Or if mm -hmm. you don't, I could ask them. Sure. <laughs> yeah. That's sure. good. Okay. All right. Um, Hank Thomas has arrived, so we'll let him <laughs> set up and we'll begin his, his talk. Do we need to get him over here? Probably. Yeah. 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 I'm glad you brought a computer because I did not. I need, I need John. I <laughs> expected that. Well, we got a USB. We got a USB cable. Uh, we had an adapter on here. I won't be able to make that. Oh, here it is. Yeah.
You're good to go. Let's see. Oh, how topical. That's what I thought. <laughs> Let's see. Let me see if I can. Hmm. All my notes are. <laughs> is this what the problem is that you were talking about? No. Mm -hmm. okay. Try. Yeah. I'll try to use a presenter view, um, but I don't know why it's not picking up the other monitor. Hmm. Hit the full screen and see if it will just uh, kind of do that for you. I don't see your notes on the screen behind you. I know. I don't have them here either. <laughs> <laughs> have fun. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Well, I guess we can just go through it. See if I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, urban farming. You don't have a display on there, so you yeah, we can probably go back to the one you were using. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, nope, no problem. Can you flip it back and forth between your screen and the notes? Well, there's notes. Yeah, those are... Uh, oh, I see, but it's not... Let's see. I don't know why. It's not picking up that. Try one more time.
Oh well. We'll just go with it like that. Nothing? Nothing in this one. Throw that one away too. You have another? I got a USB drive. I, I don't have another computer. Because I put it on both. <laughs> so I wouldn't have a problem with technology. Uh, hmm. Got something up there. Well, can you stop and then start over? That's what I was. Okay. Y'all want to continue? I'll see. If yeah, and we'll this. just let you work on that. And then we'll. we'll <sighs> that'll work for you. Yeah, because we'll, I thought we could just get you punched in there. Okay, so we are still on item number four, Annual Sustainable Landscape Awards. Um, we left off where we had six residential, one civic, and one commercial application in. Is that correct? That is correct. And you were saying that your complex and four others were yeah, yes, going to enroll. So. Uh, Sue? Well, let me ask. The restaurant category is strictly for restaurants or any commercial? It's strictly for restaurants. It's strictly for restaurants. So the apartment complex would come in under civic commercial? Unless it's an individual. Unless it's a person's patio garden. Correct. And it's residential. Okay. You might be sure residents know that they can enter their own. Sure. Yes, ma'am. I can do that. Because there was some Facebook discussion about that. Sarah Marsh was saying we should add another category for apartment dwellers, but this is residential. a little late yeah. to add something now, and it is residential. Mm -hmm. There was some concern, I think, that it would be an unfair competition, but I think our judges could balance that. Assuming we yeah, I mean, if you, have a, if you have a patio, a little patio, and it has uh, tomatoes, those hanging tomatoes, and you have eggplants, and you have all this other stuff, and you have a b b backyard, and all it has is some string beans, I mean, you know. Yeah. I think people are good enough judges to see that the patio is a good residential. This is okay. How are we doing on judges? I don't know. That's part of it. How are we doing, Todd? Okay. <laughs> well, well, I hadn't, I had not had the opportunity to contact Calvin Bell, but I'll still try to contact him. He's a organic gardening guru, uh, which I think if we could get him to be a judge, that'd be fantastic. Um, Remind me I'd what day is a judge and how many, how much time it takes. Um, I'm right on, on hand. We had a bunch when when I was there, was like four of us, but two were residential and two were commercial. So we oh. had uh, separate judges for the commercial and separate judges for the residential. But this might just be the time to have all the judges, how many we think we need, judge everything. Do we know if the residences are spread all over town pretty much? They probably will be. Mm -hmm. And I've given a week, and it was the week after Father's Day for, for viewing those. Okay. For judging? Okay. For judging in June. Um, I kind of squeeze things in between the holidays. And right, the between Father's the Father's Day and, and then Fourth, Fourth of July. July. And then, you know, that's kind of yeah. how I did the timing on that. Um, I think I can get Judy Brittenham. Oh, good. I think she'd be an excellent um, judge. Judge Judy. Okay. <laughs> Professor Judy. Professor Judy, okay. And I'll I'll talk with um 
the staff at the extension office and see if they could recommend uh, anyone or anyone who might be interested available to be a judge. I thought I had included a little list for you all uh, previously, like Dawn was on the list. Um, I'm I good with that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll look that up and I'll yeah. send that to you. I was thinking former members like Kathy Launder and Dawn. Yeah. Uh, Kim Hesse. Mm -hmm. She was former urban forester. Okay. How about Martin. Cindy? Is it Cindy yeah. Cope? Derek. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Derek would be good. Yeah, that'd be that'd Cindy be Cope. that'd be good. Yeah. Okay. All of those are good. It's just that if we have six residences, a couple of apartment complexes, and a and a rest a couple of restaurants, it could be a big project if they are going to judge all categories. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and then if they're all, all over town, then that yeah. means you're running around. Uh, and all of them have a food focus, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. We could get if you guys see a place or are at a place that you know as a restaurant gardener or something, you know, don't be afraid to ask them and okay. mm -hmm. recruit. Because I was about to run over to Greenhouse Grill with my with an application form. <laughs> they beat me to it. Uh, I think I'm going to have right. to do that with Tap Thai. Oh, I was just thinking of Tap Thai because yeah, they, they had their garden. It's um, on uh, school. If you're heading toward the airport on 15th Street, is the intersection about halfway the block after you go through that light at 15th and school. It's Tep Thai. It's a, a Thai restaurant. It's on the right-hand side, across from uh, Marvin's IGA. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah I need to know that. They've been that. there for years and, and garden for years. And they've always had oh, stuff. I did not know that. Okay. Yeah, it's good, too. Mm-hmm. Does the Green House oh, Grill have a garden this year? Mm -hmm. They do. They do. Okay. They just mm -hmm. put one out. They just put one out. Farmer's Table Restaurant used to do that. Mm -hmm. I think they have some, too. Yeah, that's another one that we need to... I don't know where that one is. It's on the same strip, a little bit up from Nomads. It's a house um, on the west side of the road. What was there before? David Lewis? Is it new? Well, it's changed names, but it's still... Well, what was it before? People. What was it before? I don't know, Rock House or Brick House. Brick House. Okay. Brick House. It's a little bit down from the old bus station and Rick's Iron Skillet. Yeah. Okay. Still can't put it in there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, are there any other sub items on item number four that we need to discuss about the uh, annual landscape competition? So we have to work on judges and uh, find out if we could drum up some more business for the uh, commercial and um, civic gardens. Okay. Would it be okay for me to go ahead and mention this? Uh, well, coming when we get down to other business or new business. Okay. Yeah, we're almost there. Okay, item, how are you coming? You ready? Sure. Okay. <laughs> well, we will return to item number five on the agenda. Well, after being an extended absence, uh, saw the new, you know, the new way we're going to do the... Uh, um, uh, awards and stuff. I think that's great. Uh, so I wanted to kind of do some research on the urban farming and, and you know, and kind of learn more about that as as how it goes and and and, and everything like that. And I know it's kind of become a new thing. And and as far as the development and um, stuff. So, but what I found is, you know, it, it is it's the oldest new fad in America. You know, um, kind of the history behind it. You know, cities, cities and agriculture grew together. You know, you're not going to get a city if you don't have agriculture because you're walking around all the time, and you're not going to find any place to build if you don't have, you know, one thing to to stop you. Um, but the one thing they did develop was this idea of rural and the separation of the city and the and the space. Um, but but what what was occurring was, you know, people are lazy. <laughs> when it, you know, and, and so what 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 started to occur was like you you know you had these feed lots and, and things like that, and you know throwing your sewage in the street and you know and, and letting your animals use the street for whatever they wanted to go, and so you started to get these diseases and and everything you know in the community. 
well, if you're getting your food from the community and within the city, then you know, then this, your food is going to start to have these diseases as well. You start to have, you know, uh, the, the the New York Swill scandal where they were uh, giving milk from these sick cows that they were just picking up and you know, and, and giving those to the elementary school children and things like that, and the stockyards, which were just, you know, basically stacked rows of, of cows that they would just, you know, get all the milk from and, and everything. So in the early turn of the century, you know, we had these big changes that were coming off. Uh, Mr. Pasteur, you know, came up with pasteurized milk, um, began to be able to uh, refrigerate stuff. Uh, began to be able to can stuff on a grand scale as opposed to doing it, you know, in the kitchen. So what we created then was the ability to take the uh, in-town farm that everyone was having to use, and we moved it out to the, quote, clean rural area, if you will. And, and, and so it became this out-of-sight, out-of-mind situation where, whatever happens out there is, is, is fine and, and we're happy with it because we get to go down to the store every day and, and purchase it and we trust everything that goes on down there and, and it's great because look how pretty it is. Uh, but one of the things that, that did develop or start to develop during that time was, um, you know, different techniques of growing in density. Um, you know, they had the, the French intensive de technique which was basically uh, lots of compost, small areas. If we keep enough nutrients in the soil, then we can grow a lot denser, you know, uh, plant material than we're, than we're doing over these larger scales. The other part, and so, you know, as this, uh, as the garden and agriculture moves out of the city, there is a couple of times that, that it does come back into the city. Um, most of the time, it comes back when we need it. Um, you know, and, and things like that. Uh, the Victory Gardens that they had during World War One and World War Two, when they could produce, um, you know, it came upon, you know, hey, are we going to produce one person produce a thousand carrots, or can we have a thousand people produce one carrot? You know, it's all about allocating, you know, uh, priorities and, and what are we going to do to get those things to to get the most efficiency. So you know we had this war going on, and and so let's allocate our um, stuff the best way possible. So you know, the government and everybody else was saying, hey, you know, you you grow your part and do your part, and 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 we'll go through that and 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 spread the wealth. The other part that never left the city that's still there um, is the urban poor. You know, poor people. When you come to when you're living and the you know the biggest developer of, of, of things is survival, you know what do you spend your money on? Do you spend it on food? Do you spend it on you know getting by on a daily basis? If you can grow your own food, whether it be in a small coffee can or whatever, you know you develop that thing of hey I could put money towards something else as opposed to putting it toward food. You know, and you can grow it into the small spaces, and and you know, and that type of thing. So, that type of density and the and you know that urban poor really kind of never went away, and so it it was still there, and 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 using those those types of things to to grow and having the urban urban farmer. This big resurgence of urban farming uh, started early 2000s, uh, the 20 and 30 somethings. Uh, Coming all from different backgrounds, be it you know rich, middle income, uh, poor, um, starting to have this different knowledge base of you know the world getting small, the internet. I can find any information whenever I want to, wherever I want to, instantaneous. Um, so these these all these different varieties of different things uh, that people want to try becomes important, and, and they want to find out about it. Um, so. What they find is, if I want to go buy this in a store, it's really expensive. Um, but you know, it kind of goes back to the the war model. I can grow this myself, and it's cheap. So, and it also I can get a lot bigger variety than than is offered down at the the clean store. You know, that that everybody has everything in. The other part that started to come around too at the same time, and it's funny how these things all kind of come into 
in waves is, you know, people wanting a little more knowledge about their food. Um, you know, you're starting to get mad cow disease, bird flu, um, childhood obesity, you know, these things that are coming along at the same time. And, you know, people just want a little more knowledge about it. Where is it coming from? The don't ask, don't tell grocery policy is starting to kind of go away. Um, you know, what what is this carrot? Why do they, all these carrots look exactly the same? Why are they always perfect? You know, what is, why, how did, how did this occur? And so, you know, then this became this, you know, more in-depth uh, idea of, of what people are trying to do. The other part that came of, uh, other phase that came along with it was, again, with, with the, the amount of knowledge and that you can learn every day and, and, and the, the ability to see that <clears throat> it's not just a poor person down the street. It's every town has a poor person and then and, and there's thousands of them. And so, you know, in the scheme of things, you know, humans are really good people no matter what comes around. And, and so you really do want to try to help out, you know, your fellow man. And, and so, you know, helping out those less fortunate, you know, and if, if we can reduce that food cost for them or, you know, providing the food pantry or, you know, something like that also um, came along. But one of the great byproducts that they found that comes with this is, um, it, you know, creates this lost sense of community where, you know, you're stuck in the house all day and you're watching TV or you're stuck in your cubicle and you're doing, you know, these things that are very singular in nature, being at technology or, or whatever. And then when you get out in this garden and, you know, these other gardens and, you know, see people and work with people, you know, it's really kind of developing who your neighbor is and, and, and how that kind of works together. Um, the other part is it gives you, you know, the lost reason to be outside, which is, you know, just to be with nature and, and get that good vibe. In my notes, I have this, <laughs> uh, they did study, um, Burroughs, I think the lady's name is, out of Rutgers, and, and she had found that the mental health is, uh, this really contributes to uh, stress relief, mental health issues uh, with different different people and the reduction of those medical costs uh, that come along with, with, with this type of thing. So, you know, that was, that this really kind of brought about this resurgence is just, you know, everybody finding out what a, what a neat and kind of great thing this is. You know, the, the U.S. is always, I do it as well. We're very U.S. centered and, you know, the world starts with us and, and everything. But that's not the case. I mean, this urban farming is going along everywhere. I mean, we're looking at Mexico, Canada, France, Great Britain. Every place in South America is doing it. Um, United States, obviously. But it's not just big cities. You know, it's not just Seattle, Detroit, you know, New York, Chicago, those huge air, metropolitan areas. But we are, we're getting... Um, you know, smaller places like Asheville, you know, Fable here, Boulder, Colorado, a lot of neater, you know, little small uh, communities that have uh, long looking, you know, effects on, you know, and, and what to do with these places. Now, as far as types, you know, and things of the urban farming, uh, you know, what I've found, this is kind of my diagnosis of, of the types of urban urban farming and how that kind of goes about. There's really three types. Um, there's the private type, and what that consists of is, you know, personally owned property. Um, this is my urban garden in my backyard, and I grow my food, and, and you know, and it's really private. Um, not that other people don't use it, but you know, just kind of the overall deal. Um, and then there's the things that are like uh, res or restaurants and stuff, chef gardens, uh, things that people take out of those and use to make a profit out of, be it through the restaurant um, or selling the a product of the garden, uh, lettuces and things of that nature. That's becoming a real big deal um, over in China is what I'm finding out. It's just because of the, the distance that they have to bring the produce over there. They can grow it so much cheaper and closer. Um, and so, you know, you're really getting that. Uh, type of deal. So, you know, personal gardens, family gardens, um, and, and, and that type is really more of a private entity. You know, you really only have a singular person benefiting from that. The semi-private, um, what that is, is it's, a, it's either, you know, mostly public or uh, publicly owned or donated land. Uh, someone says, hey, we have some vacant lots here. 
uh, the, the, the city has you know some park space or something like that, that they're wanting to get rid of. And how that kind of works is, you know, we have this space. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to give you this section, and then this section becomes yours. Um, and so this is kind of where the semi-private comes. It's a larger piece, but you basically own this smaller section, and everything that you get from that smaller section benefits you uh, personally. Um, you can kind of do with it what you will. If you want to grow tomatoes or whatever, that becomes, becomes your benefit. Um, and how you want to use it, um, and then you know it. Re what they have found with these is it you know really develops the sense of community. Um, but one of the things that to make it successful is you have to get local people involved. You can't have um, people from outside of the community coming in and saying, "Hey, we're going to develop this community garden and we're going to do all these nice things for you, and we appreciate it," and then we leave because then it just goes away. If you don't have people tied into it that are invested in it, that are close and whatever, it, the, the rate of success is, is really small. You have to have people close that are invested in it, especially in the really uh, urban and, and poorer areas. Um, but they've had huge amounts of success, especially like South Central uh, farms. Um, the amount of produce they're bringing out of there, you know, is, is just astronomical. Uh, Canada has a place called Sharing Backyards. Uh, it's a little bit different than everybody else. If you want to garden, uh, they have a website you can go on to, and, and so you can find a place to garden and say, you know, you want to donate part of your backyard to the Sharing Backyards, then someone else can come and farm in your, in your backyard. Um, and, and so that's kind of how that process uh, goes. It's really kind of a, just a a little bit different, you know, take in, in allowing you to have that open open land uh, that you that you own. The third one really is called pub is is what I'm calling uh, public, and it's really all all publicly owned or all donated. Uh, it's multiple people are benefiting for the farm area. Anyone can use any of the products that's used on it. Uh, most of these gardens, they're still really trying to figure out, wrap their head around how these are going to work. Um, basically, a lot of them are groves or, or fruit or nut producing locations. Um, haven't seen many of them that are softer fruits or, or softer uh, things such as you know uh, other types of vegetables. They're still looking for that, um, but they're just trying to develop what is going to be the best way to use it, and, and still trying to work on you know how these how these things come together because. While I know people are great, <laughs> there are people that, that they take advantage of situations. So that what they're trying to figure out is how to best develop these so that you don't have people coming in and taking all the harvest and using those to make profit from because they, you know it is free and it's and it's out there. So you know they're they're really trying to find um, a balance, you know, in between what's what's free. And what you know works, you know, and so there's this this inner interplay. The other one I saw that was really neat was uh, it's called neighborhood fruit. And basically, what you do is if you have a pear tree, you come on the website and you register your pear tree, and your pear tree produces fruit during this amount of time. Well, then you get notices during this amount of time when this pear tree on this particular street is producing fruit. People come by pick your pear tree, whichever, how that works. And it's really kind of an interactive, so you have a map of where are all the pear trees, where are all the apple trees, and if your apple tree is not registered, then people, you know, you can't pick it. But, you know, it just kind of goes in and, and, and whichever way you want to use it. And, you, and you, it's almost kind of a donation uh, way and aspect of, the, of, the, of how it's working. So this one's... You know, still really developing. Uh, the other part that they have that kind of goes along with this one is there's one that's really similar to what we're doing with the tools for the library, the library tool. Uh, I forgot what it's called, the Fable Library uh, Tool uh, deal. And it's called the Five Borough, uh, Five Borough Farms. And what they have is basically farming tools that you can come and, and lease or come and check out. Um, all over the city, and there's all these different places um, 
in those places there's specific books about urban farming and how they relate to other things and, and so they're still developing on how these programs are, are working. This is this one was really interesting and you could have read about it for months and months. I mean just of all the all the stuff that's going on about it. As far as the future, I mean the future of this stuff is just you know, limitless and, 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 and you know, kind of the image right here is, is what they call the dragonfly and it's this huge urban farm that they're looking at in New York and it's, it's supposed to span, you know, you know, feed over a million people, you know, in this development and, and, and having all this stuff. But one of the things that, you know, we just have to make sure of, and, and this kind of goes back to the um, last slide with the public is, you know, making sure that we learn from the mistakes of the past and not doing, you know, similar things. One of the projects uh, from, I think it was, uh, the Portland Fruit and Tree Project, <clears throat> they were worried about creating a monoculture, you know, and, and, and making sure that you do have uh, the, uh, the amount of flowers and things that you're going to have to pollinate, you know, all these fruit trees that you just introduced, you know. so. Making sure that there's a balance, you know, in between these these types of things, and and, and making sure that that it all kind of works. Um, so it's it's really being smart about it. Um, the way I really think about food and and a lot of stuff and energy and and how all that's going to work out in the future is it really has to be broke down in percentages, and it, you can't go to one thing and say, hey, we're going to do this, and it's going to be a hundred percent, and that's how it's going to finish you know it's got to be 10 percent is maybe urban for you know farming and then you know 20 percent is something else and 30 percent is something else and that way you know you really kind of get this diversity and you're not laden on you know one thing and i and i think this right now is really coming into its own and people are really excited i think we just have to you know kind of maintain you know that excitement and see you know kind of how it goes from here so that's it but that was that's great. Well, thank you. That's very good. Thank you. Can I? Can I yes. Could I ask that maybe at our next meeting, sort of as a follow-up, we get a report from what was what was done at Yvonne Richardson? I think um, <coughs> two years ago, a year ago, there were some fruit trees planted at Yvonne Richardson. I can give you an update on that when I do my staff report. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. Because I'd like to, after what he said, whether we realized mistakes were made, we planted the wrong kind of trees, and everything got eaten up by bugs, or just how it went. So, okay, good. And maybe we might, depending on your report, think about another location. Okay. Well, thank you. That was very yeah. good. Can I make one, one quick comment? Yes. <clears throat> I've got three small kids. Um, two of them are in elementary school, and I really am uh, very pleased that. The urban farming concept and uh, is kind of integrated within the school, and that you know, for instance, my my uh, oldest boy was given a um, cabbage plant and have this competition where they whoever grows the biggest cabbage actually wins five hundred dollars or something like that. Wow. So, you know, um, and that's from Burpee, I think. I think Burpee is doing that, but you know that. I, I think because of the internet, because the, this is going, we are in fact kind of breeding, you know, getting this into everybody, into the, the kid's head that this is a good thing and we all need to be doing this. You know, I, I have chickens at my house and my kids Jeez. just love to you know, show all their friends the chickens and, it, you know, I, I'm hopefully creating in them the, you know, long-term appreciation for this. And so I, I think there's... It was amazing to me because I first kind of started this. I'm like, oh, I'll just kind of hit the highlights, you know, just kind of you know move on through. The depth at which this can go is you know, infinite. I mean, you can spend an hour talking about one piece of, of part of this or or how these are, are really going to working, and and they actually you know have really. You know, as far as like the medical research and the stress and, and the stuff, they really have a whole, you know, part put together as far as you know how how that that's that's going to work and and everything. And it, it was really pretty interesting to see, you know, how you know maybe some of this can be applied and and, and work out. 
I know there's one community garden um, over by Walker Park. Um, they asked the master composters to come and help them set up their compost seats, and it's, 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 there's a fence around it, but they had all sorts of stuff in there. And I, I don't recall how old it is, but uh, it's probably now about three years old. That was the other part of that, you know, talking about people getting involved. They said if you get people close involved, then there's never really a problem with trespassing or, you know, mm -hmm. that type of stuff. If you come in and you say, hey, we're going to do this here and leave, it never lasts. It, it just, it's gone and, and, and it's just a waste. So you really have to get the people close in there and involved in the situation and, and, and make sure that they, you know, they want it. If, the, if you don't want it, then, you know, it's kind of, you move on, but it was, it was really neat. Well, we have a lot of hungry people in this town, and to think that all the space we have could be growing some food for them is important. <coughs> Any other comments, points for discussion? Thank you very much. Yep. Okay. The next item on the agenda is the landscape manual. Uh, has anyone had the chance to read the entire manual yet? Okay. You have any points you'd like to bring up? Sent them to John. Okay. Thank you very much. Lee right. actually uh, addressed all of the points you made that were fantastic. Oh, okay. Okay. For those. Does it seem confusing well, or kind of daunting? For somebody that's never gone through it, probably a little bit, you know, but I'm sure once you've done it a couple of times, it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it was well put together, I thought, you know, to it. There is a lot. Yes. I wish it could be a little shorter. Yeah, uh, I didn't. It was like Oh, you, oh, you compressed? I think I remember. And okay. now it's down to that. Okay. It's okay. been chopped and, uh, and chopped and chopped. Oh yeah. Do you remember the old one, Hank? Yep. <laughs> and that one is like night and day, isn't it? Yeah. And I haven't made it all the way through because I want to actually really yeah. look at it. Um, but yeah, because that was something I mentioned um, last time was kind of having a quick reference guide, like in the back, um, you know, of, of kind of people that professionals that do it all the time, you know, and say, hey, this is a quick reference guide, this is what we need, blah, blah, blah. move on down the street, you know, and, and not have to digest this thing every time. Mm -hmm. um, so that might be, you know, just in the back of the, back of the deal. Resource this, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, we were kind of hoping that flow chart, those flow charts well, are the resource that you were kind of right. looking for, unless you were wanting something a little more checklist. Well, I, and like I said, I haven't been all the way through it um, to see all the flow charts. But okay. I'll tell you what, checklists are really nice for making sure that we have what you want before it gets to you. Um, they are on there. I know. That's what I said I haven't. Love it. I haven't been on there. For, for those of us who haven't gone through the whole uh, document yet, do we just send in our comments and uh, uh, changes or recommendations to you? Correct. Okay. All right. The first five pages look pretty good. I think I was, was, was learning for me how much work our urban foresters have to do for this. <laughs> go out and check yes. this. Go out and check yes. that. Look over these plans. Review these plans. Come in for a preliminary discussion. I hope you're getting a new one hired pretty soon. <laughs> you're going to be spread a little thin. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Any other comments on the landscape manual? Okay. The next item on the agenda is staff reports and updates. What do you have for us, John? Okay. I'll talk about the Yvonne Richardson uh, orchard. I went out recently and looked at everything, and everything looks really good, and it's producing fruit. Remind me what we planted. Um, what we I know there was apple, there's peach. Wow. Um, and then and there's probably... There's a nut tree, oh. I know there's a okay. pecan, I think we planted pecan. Okay. Um, 
everything looked really healthy. We're going to mulch and pull the weeds out of there. There was no insect or disease problems going on. Um, looked really nice. And the farm is right next to it because you were talking about diversity. They have their regular vegetable garden there and then there's woods around there so it does have a nice diversity and you know can hold an insect population that can travel from where to wherever. So I mean it's in a good location. I was just kind of surprised at how well. <laughs> okay. I was like happy about it going looks good. That doesn't work. Yeah. Well can, can we do another one somewhere? So I don't see why not. Okay, find some money. <laughs> <laughs> Very simple. You just get some money. Okay, I'll, you know. I'll right out of <laughs> Good. I have faith in you. Okay. Um, okay, the grant status, we're still see installation coming in the next week uh, or two. Okay, all right. See stuff happening in the median. So let's do a clean up. And, um, we're going to have water and irrigation to all of the, to both the medians. Um, we're going to do a little change up. We're going to use some wildflowers in there because we will, it'll look pretty bare with just butterfly weed those first couple of years. So we're going to use some annual mixes um, in there and have wildflowers. So it'll That'd be nice. It'll they'll come up. More variety they'll just, to they'll it. die and off. Then, and then we'll have a lot more milkweed as, as they progress. <clears throat> I'm very excited about that. Um, 265, Highway 265, you should see trees planted in there now. Yeah, it looks um, nice. Yeah. On a crossover. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I, it looks nice. I mean, the trees are opening up and, yeah, the ground look, doesn't look too hot, but... No, uh, we wanted the trees a little more nice. soil amendment done with the installation on that, and that's mm -hmm. something we're doing on the, the rest of it. But, yeah, they got put in. Um, Van Ash, I think, is completely done. What is uh, going on at Van Ash? We had those street trees installed. They last time I went by, they were missing a few, like the, the elderberries. But I believe they've gotten everything installed now. Um, and then spring escrow. Go ahead. Did we do the ones? God, went blank. Joyce. Oh, like by the post office. Yeah. We did the street trees there. Part of the escrow just recently, like like last week. Two yes. Weeks ago? Okay. Yes, those that was part of our escrow plantings that uh, we did. And I believe that's about done. I'm waiting for the call to go do a final inspection on that. I haven't gotten that. Um, we have hired a new urban forester. It is Lee Porter. Oh, cool. Who wrote Good. the landscape well, manual? That's what. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice coup. Yeah, she, <laughs> she earned it by writing that. <laughs> yeah. What job did she leave? She, like, she is with Resilience and Sustainability Department. She works for Peter Neer Garden currently. And uh, she's a Bachelor of Landscape Architecture from the University of Arkansas. She's worked at um, Botanical Garden of the Ozarks. Yeah. And I'll make her tell you the rest of her story when she comes in. She'll be next. She'll be in the next month. Okay. A question I have. Um, I was. I happened to run up and down Garland a couple times over by the. Uh, what is it? That little park Grand area. At Grab Park. Yeah. Uh, I guess that's what it is. But um, Sycamore and Garland, that area. And there are trees up there. Did we put those in, in the median? Yeah, yeah. They look nice, too. Okay, we're yeah. keeping those, but then we're going to add the Virginia mm -hmm. Sweet Spire and then the mm -hmm. uh, wildflower mixes on the side, and then the smallest wildflower mix will be on the perimeter of those medians, so it'll be quite different. There's a lot on Greg. Uh, oh, what's the cross street? You're going on Greg. Drake. Greg and Drake? Yeah, right by the, the park. Mm-hmm. Over there, where they just Where's cleared the off that park. whole under cleared stuff. everything underneath. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, uh, it's been reported several times. I um, believe Jonathan Eli, Eli is looking into that. Um, what happens in a situation where they remove trees without any should, kind of should they go, permit? Is it four years? Five years? Five years. Five years. Okay. Then um, I'll take a look at the entire site. I've already done that, and it was five acres, so they'll have to plant. 10% um, of, of the entire site. 
So they're going to have to plant I thought I'm sorry. a half an acre, if I remember. Did they take out trees? Yeah, they took out trees. A lot. They took out a lot. And then what trees they did leave, uh, they were in very right. bad condition. They were doing <laughs> really bad. Oh, okay. okay. So I'm aware of that. Well, so I, did it. Yeah. I drove by. Drove You're talking about well, that's Drake. Drake and Quality Lane. It's on the corner of Drake and Greg, really. There's a lot of construction right going across on from there. the Applebee's apartments line. and yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I passed it right by the railroad tracks and yeah. I noticed it last week. There's a vista there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can you can see all the way to the. I thought it was right. preparation for more apartments, probably. It eventually could be, but they didn't have permission. Well, Lord to knows do that we really need some more apartments. Yeah. Okay. We're aware of it. All right. I, uh, no, that's, that's what, I saw that. I was like, <laughs> I've gotten like several calls, emails, and okay. you know, other city employees have asked. Everyone okay. is asked. All right. You can't do anything in this town without. Who is the owner? <laughs> okay, so it looks like we've moved on to other business and new business. I, I have it, but I, I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah. I think it might be called the Drake Land, something or another. I, I can, you can't quote me on that. Oh, company. Okay. Um, Question? The rezoning, uh, I know they just purchased that land. I'm worse on the horrible on the streets. Coming down the back side, there's the uh, community center mm -hmm. uh, on the back side. And they're rezoning that as an acre. I guess they just purchased. What community center? Are you talking about the senior center? No, uh, the. <coughs> I know what you're talking center, about. Community center. Uh, Yvonne Richardson? Yes. Just south of there. Uh huh. They got the rezoning hearing. Do we yeah. know what's going on in there? Uh, oh, yeah. I've seen the signs, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, going to be multiple housing units in there. Townhouse, or not townhouse, but zero online stuff. Uh, I think a variety, and I have met with the developer of that project, and we've walked the entire lot, and I feel comfortable with what they're going to approach, you know, from a conceptual point of view, and, and meeting with them. They have met with mm -hmm. me, and this is a bunch of. I don't do anything with rezoning. Um, no, I yeah, yeah. I, I, I know there's. They brought in greedy goats just recently to that site uh, to remove some of the invasive plants. There was bamboo on that site in a huge grove. There's some strange pond in there and some other unusual elements. But yeah, I'm aware of that one going on. Ken, as part of other business that we're on now and new business, could you give us at the next meeting an update on these items that we just talked about, the two that Hank brought up? Okay. Because I don't know if everyone is aware of what has been going on, uh, and if you could give us an update on those. And what the regs are. Right. Okay. And that way everybody will have an eye, an eye out for what's happening. Or they'll just know, yeah. Yeah. There used to be a gas station where that was going to be there, and there's some significant trees that that developer is uh, really wanting to preserve. So, and then they have some stuff on. There's an alley that also runs up the the hillside that there's some significant trees there they're trying to preserve as well. Okay. All right, um, Aubrey, you had wanted to discuss the mini peace gardens. Okay. The MNI Peace Gardens Tour? Yes. Yes, it's part of the business. It's annual. Uh, how many years it is now? I can't remember. Uh, nine or something. But anyhow, it uh, has uh, nine gardens again this year. One of them's World Peace Weapon Prairie, and there's no charge to go there in, on South Duncan Avenue because it's a city park, nature park. And uh, so, but there. Or to get to go to all the other eight gardens, uh, it's a $15 charge. But it's a donation to a nonprofit, the Army Center for Peace, Justice, and Ecology that sponsors it. And it's a very wide range of, of gardens. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we have a map here that I have online, and everybody's invited. And in particular, uh, uh, to this committee because we are coming up with our 
garden tour or what what do we call it? The garden contest? The sustainable landscape competition. Sustainable landscaping. Well a lot of these people would qualify. So if anyone can see them early enough to suggest to those owners that they might be people who should uh, add their gardens to the list of those to be studied or judged. Because there's no prize for, for this. There's no judging going on. It's just simply uh, an afternoon, a morning, late morning, early afternoon event on May 28th. Do you have any contact with any of these gardeners? Yeah, I guess I know them all. Yeah? Well, would you act as our liaison for the sustainable um, landscape competition? I will do that. Thank you. And I'll probably, I usually go to all the gardens on the list each year. Mm -hmm. There is changes, so I'm on to them many times. And make photos and share those. Uh, but I think I might be staying at WP that day to help talk about the plants that are growing there, the not natives, which are the, the primary uh, joy of World Peace Weapon Pretty. But uh, anyway, this is inexpensive and for good cause you'd probably <coughs> be interested in, but uh, I wanted to remind, I wanted to thank you for those two plum gum trees. That was your aim. Water two plus. Was in the tree giveaway last year. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. a year ago, a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. Seems like a year ago it was not. It, it wasn't this year. It was last year. We had the yeah, two below. Fourteen. Yeah. And one that I got is doing great. Good. And I planted it uh, in wetland, deep black soil. It would be similar to what you'd find in Louisiana swamp where they were, mm -hmm. they were hatched, and uh, it's doing fine. Another one didn't do so well, and it may be the person that planted it there. Uh, I suggested that he put it, put it right down here in the wetter spot. It hadn't done well. I don't know if the difference in the way you spread the roots around, or you know. But anyway, it's wonderful that the trees, that this committee. It's been involved with it over the years in, in the flowering shrubs and so forth that we have. It's wonderful what it's doing. I know other people that have things growing near them that have come from that. So I think. Um, Would you take a picture of it and give it to John so that we could use it? To uh, Of the one that's doing well? Yeah, well, I, it's. Yeah. Uh, and that way we can use Not it next year right for the. Now, but I think they should be. Well, Don Steinkraft had done a plant presentation oh, on, on black tubelo, a different tubelo. Uh -huh. That way we could use it as a know, propaganda next year. The ones in the swamps, tubelo gum trees, is yeah. the name we knew down there. But, uh, now, will our June meeting be to tour the winning gardens? Is that, do I have the months wrong? No, I think the um, June. Meaning will be before we have the tours or the the, the judging. to judging, and then July. I guess we could, if you guys want to, we could do our July meeting um, as a tour of the winning gardens. That's yeah, that's, that's what we usually do. Okay, okay. Uh, a meeting is the is the tour of the winning gardens. That's we also need to pick somebody for plants next month as well. Oh, okay. Well, I want to do a pond cypress, but I'm trying to figure out how busy I'm going to be in June. Because we're leaving the 28th and we'll be gone for a while. When is our meeting in June? Um, the I'll be gone June too. That's a lot. Uh oh. So, uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. And will, will we have enough for a meeting? <laughs> yeah, we're going to. Well, I will be here, but I just don't know. Well, it's going to be the 15th. Oh, actually, the 8th. The 8th? The 8th. Uh -huh. See, I think I'm not getting back till. I'll be in Hawaii. I'll be getting married. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Hank just got married. <laughs> oh, who? Hank. Oh, you did? Oh, well, congratulations. We didn't know. Yeah. Okay, so. See, I'm not who's coming up? back. Who's up? I'm not coming back till the 5th or 6th. Well, I better be here. here. Okay. I'll be getting married. He, he, won't, be he won't be here. He won't be here. He's definitely out. You I'll won't be here. here. I will be out. I'll do August. You'll be on a pond cypress, okay? okay. You'll do August. Okay, August. Thank you.
You're going to tell us how we can tell those from a regular ball of cypress? Oh, it's easy, Aubrey. Okay. What about you? Okay. Do you want to introduce June? He's doing I'll, June. I'll do the next one, yeah. Bring your and July is the uh, <laughs> oh okay July well, is the uh, like yeah sort of the competition okay who wants to do who's going to do August uh, Sue has got August so I guess if we get July out of the way then yeah we'll have a, oh well we won't need a July right we won't need a, a July because that's the competition okay and so we're good until the fall thank you all right. Okay, uh, is there any other business, any new items that someone would like to discuss? Uh, if there are no additional topics for discussion, um, I guess it's time to adjourn. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Okay. She second it? All, who second? Somebody? I second. I second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Meeting adjourned. Thank okay.